On today's episode, we break down the 10 best games of the 2023 home and away season. We're also going to take a look at the latest trade requests and what could be coming the other way. And we take a look at some trade targets for West Coast and the Western Bulldogs. All that and more on today's episode of Zero Hangar TV. All right, so straight into it, we are deep into the final series already, but we're still taking a look at the regular home and away season. So we're going to break down the top 10 best games of the 2023 home and away season. Uh, so we're going to go one by one and we'll start at number 10 and we've got uh, round 23, Adelaide versus Sydney. Why was this one? Why did this one make yeah, it? Yeah, um, not probably one of the most controversial games we've had for, <laughs> for some time. Obviously, with how the game ended, there was that goal review uh, at Adelaide Oval that really, um, when you look at the ladder cost, um, the Crows a spot in the top eight. Uh, obviously, Sydney also made it made it through thanks to the result. And with, after that, Ben Keys kicked a uh, kick um, was I guess you know what is a, as a behind uh, hitting the post. You know angles show that it was absolutely a goal. It was a <laughs> bit of a gap. Uh, even it led to the AFL having to front the media and concede that it was a mistake. Um, certainly wouldn't have left too many Adelaide fans too happy. But uh, certainly a memorable one. It was a great game, mm -hmm. a great finish, but more memorable for the, uh, the controversy that kind of concluded the game itself. Yeah. And number nine, we have uh, Collingwood and Essendon in round six. Yeah, Anzac Day, what a game. Um, Nick Dacos was obviously the Anzac Day medalist um, with a fantastic performance, a couple of goals, heaps of touches and, and unanimously voted in. But it was really the, the charge back um, from the Pies in that last quarter. Essendon looked so strong through the first few quarters and up until three quarter time. And then that Collingwood avalanche that we've come to know over the last 18 months on full display um, and a really memorable win for them um, in front of you know a record crowd. So yeah, uh, pretty unlucky not to make uh, maybe a higher spot, but it's a pretty good list. It was, yeah. Uh, and in number eight, we have the round 15 clash between Collingwood and Adelaide. Yeah, another uh, one. The Pies are involved in a few in these, yeah. um, to no surprise. And this one uh, was an absolute shootout. Tex Walker at one end, just not missing anything. Uh, another game that also probably ended in some controversy when Jordan Dawson wasn't awarded a free kick with a few seconds left inside 50. Um, but yeah, just some of the bigger names standing up and Dawson and Walker being those for the Crows. Um, and the likes of, I think, your Pendlebury and your Dacosses uh, were both fantastic. In, in what was a game at the time, um, you know, uh, exhilarating um, with where both sides were at, calling one of the form teams of the competition and Adelaide um, really trying to announce themselves as a contender. So that was a, a big scalp um, for the Pies to claim. Yep. And number seven, I remember this one probably too well, is the around 10 clash between Port and Melbourne at the Adelaide Oval. Yeah, the uh, I think it was the last game Clayton Oliver played before he had that 10 or 12 week absence. Um, and But I think most people will remember it as the game that Zach Butt has really announced himself mm -hmm. as one of the premier players of the competition. Had put in a really strong run of form in the lead up to that game, but um, probably his best for the year. Um, a real match winning performance uh, and one where, yeah, again, both clubs seen as really strong contenders for the flag um, and one that um, was really going to separate and, and give us a, a great answer on, on how the two clubs were going at the midway point of the year. So mm -hmm. um, for Butters to lead his side over the line and for the Port to get that win was was absolutely huge in, in that long winning streak that they did have to start the year. Yeah, absolutely. And number six, Another big clash, round 13, Melbourne versus Collingwood. Yeah, well, King's birthday is always going to be pretty big and with how these two clubs were playing mm -hmm. um, at that point of the season, it was a monumental game. Now, a lot of big outs uh, for both clubs, but it still made it a really tight um, contest. Uh, and Brody Grundy's you know, first game against his old mob as well, certainly yeah. added to it. But um, Kick it a, well. it's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, such a tight affair. Um, the D's getting a, a, a win. Um, by a quite a narrow margin, and obviously in in Thursday's final, that the Pies got some revenge. So um, they couldn't certainly meet again this September, and that's going to um, be a bit of a tiebreaker if they do. But mm. it'll be in a grand final, um, and if it's anything like the last two games we've seen, it's going to be a close game. Yep. And at number five, uh, round twenty-two, Carlton versus Melbourne. Yeah, another painful is, one for me. <laughs> yeah, the the D's um, obviously are in a, a few of these as are the Pies, but the Blues um, was such a big win for them. Yeah, um, trying to cement their finals chances for the first time in ten years, coming up against um, Melbourne, who as well are still in the minor hunt for the minor premiership and a wet night uh, against the D between the D's and Blues was really tight. Great fight back, um, and obviously another game that ended with some controversy with that Christian Petrarca 
touch on the line um, mm. with his shot on goal. So uh, as a goal, yeah. <laughs> you guys, the D's had had their chances. Uh, Salem was another one that, that missed a, a very good shot on goal, but it was yeah. it was a kind of it act, certainly it was part of a very long winning streak for the Blues, but it was just one of those ones that kind of you know announced them as well as mm. you know while we, we might not be finishing top four, we're certainly going to be pushing our case um, for a deep finals finish. So um, yeah, that was one of the Carlton's biggest yep. and best wins of the year. Yep. And round 10, in coming in number four, Essendon versus Richmond, round 10. Yeah, dream, dream time. time. Yeah. We would have thought it was going to be Damien Hardwick's last as, as Richmond coach um, after he resigned just a few days later. But this game, um, great fight back, tight contest all the way to the end. And then Sam Durham taking a strong grab top of the square and, and sliding the goal with very little time left on the clock. Um, yeah, another one that I think when... I guess when you look at where the two teams were going to be earlier or maybe before the season and then you kind of reflect on that result. Uh, obviously, neither are playing uh, finals football, but it was a it was a big scalp for us at the time. I think mm. even though Richmond probably weren't at their best, um, it was uh, one of those wins that um, I think really bundled the group and, and they tried to obviously harness some of that form throughout the, the second half, wasn't to be, but um, a memorable, memorable win for a young uh, Essendon group. Yep. And coming to the top three now, so number three, we have round 16 clash between Port Adelaide and Essendon. Yeah, the Dan Houston game. Yeah. Uh, what a match winner, goal of the year contender. It's one of the three finalists, and rightfully so. Uh, when you're adding in context and how hard maybe that kick is in the wet, mind you, mm-hmm. from 55 out, 45 degree angle, uh, to go back and slot it. He's, it was when, when it was in his hands, he, he was probably one of the two or three players from Port Adelaide you'd want kicking that ball. Luckily, um, yeah, he kicked truly and um, yeah, real memorable win, extended their winning streak, obviously. And another game for Essendon where, um, you know, they were, they were still trying to get some credits on the board and, and claim some big scalps and, and Port Adelaide would have been a, a big one for them. Um, unfortunately, couldn't get it over the line, but you know, there's some late brilliance there from Archie Perkins as well. So some memorable moments for the Bombers, but that one uh, went down for Port Adelaide, yeah. Yep. And coming in at number two, another one that I remember very well. So round 18 clash between Melbourne and Brisbane. Stunning comeback. Yeah. Such a big such a big game with two top four sides going at it and Brisbane looking so comfortable and in control of that game for so long, only for Melbourne to, to pull themselves right back into the contest late. That Jake Malcolm winner. Um, but obviously a lot of the talk was also on Max Gorn's performance, one of the best of his career. Yeah. I think it was one of... It might have been the first without Brody Grundy next to him. Um, yeah. So that was... Um, a real statement performance and, and one that obviously raised a lot of questions about what Melbourne were going to do moving forward. Um, but for, for Max to put in a performance like that, lead his side over the line by two points and, and Melchon to step up late, which we've seen him do a couple of times here and there. Um, yeah, just a, a, one of the more memorable games of the season for sure. Yeah, I had quite a sore throat after that game. And coming in at number one, best game of the 2023 home and away season is, I think, Probably by no surprise, Port Adelaide and Collingwood in round 19. Yeah, at the Adelaide Oval. Um, first, first, second, there was so much build up to it and it absolutely delivered. Um, so much back and forth, lead changes, and then the Pies obviously clawing themselves back in front late with another Jamie Elliott match winner uh, from a difficult angle. It kind of was scripted so perfectly mm-hmm. um, to match that hype and build up leading into it on a, on a Saturday night. Like I said, the top two pl- um, teams. Um, of the competition at that point of the season. And, and you know, some still certainly argue that they are the two um, best sides in it. Uh, and for, for the game to pan out as it did, yeah, it was absolutely spectacular. And like you said, probably deserving of, of the top spot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any surprises or honourable mentions that didn't make the list? Uh, there's probably a few. I think the Giants were probably featured in a few early in the mm-hmm. season. That, that Sydney derby, that first Sydney derby win was, was probably one that I, I liked um, personally. It was, was pretty big. Obviously, there was a draw in round one. Um, was another one, um, very tight contest. We have a few honourable mentions uh, from the article on site written by Frank Seal. So you can head over to zerohanger.com and and scroll through that. It's pretty in-depth on all 10 games and some of the honourable mentions listed there as well. Yeah, I think one of the things that I can pick up from this list is that the Adelaide Oval is probably one of the best (laughs) places for a really intense uh, footy game. So um, yeah, good stuff there. All right, so moving over to some more trade stuff. So um, we've had a lot of trade requests come in. Um, and now we're going to be 
look at what will be coming the other way. So in terms of trade value. So we're going to go uh, down the list. So Shane McAdam was requested a trade to Melbourne. Um, yeah. Which is good. So what, what's his trade value there? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a funny one. It sounds, it sounds like the Ds will be in, in line, at the front of the line to get him. Whether they actually need him is, is something else. You know, Jake Melksham, um, you know, whether he's going to be playing or not next year is a big question. If he's not, then Shane McAdam is a, a very uh, valuable, uh, I think, replacement for him. But yeah, what do the Ds give up? You know, uh, will Adelaide be after a player in return? Um, you know, Melbourne are home to a few SA boys. I think the likes of Cade Chandler, Tom Sparrow, Harrison Petty, but all contracted um, and all re-signed over the last year or two. So hard to see any of them going the other way. So picks maybe. Um, and obviously we can always talk about future selections and, and, and kind of the variables there. But as far as a, a hand this year, and obviously Melbourne's picks can move a little bit more given that they're still in the hunt for the premiership. But pick 24, which is owned by Freo, could maybe get the job done. It's, it's going to be quite interesting how hard Adelaide go. They really want to keep him. Um, but if he's out the door, then... They can be pressing pretty hard to, to get something decent in return. Pick 24, um, you know, Melbourne aren't giving up, I don't think, a first round pick for Shane McAdam. Pick 34 in the second round as well. So they're, they're, they're probably the two picks in the bracket. Um, mm. You know, do the Ds send 24 over and Adelaide send McAdam with maybe a late pick as well? Um, makes it a bit harder, if, you know, when Melbourne don't have a third round or a fourth round this year that they can kind of um, add into the mix. But yeah, I, I think it's one of those earlier two selections in the second round that probably get it done i'm a big shane mcadam fan um and it's obviously a big blow for adelaide despite them having rochelle and rankin mm-hmm. that's also probably a reason why you might be on the move to try and get a bit more opportunity um at a club like melbourne yep uh so next one is uh brody grundy back at the days obviously um looks like he's probably going to move on at the end of the year to other port or uh, sydney i think um so what's his value there he's a tricky one yeah, it's very intriguing very intriguing just given um how open Collingwood were to, to parting with him. I think, you know, if he was off contract last year and, and it was a bit more of an open race for him, um, you know, he's demanding a first round pick. Obviously, um, his value kind of slid a little bit just given how eager Collingwood were to part ways. Um, and Melbourne aren't as open to that. Um, they certainly, I think, sounds like Brody will be finding a new club in the off season. And, and I think Melbourne will be open to it, assuming they get something decent back. So I think it was like, pick 25 or something that he, he went for uh, that Melbourne gave up for him last year maybe a similar range for them um, and it, obviously a lot of his trade value also comes down to if Melbourne are paying only a fraction uh, on top of Collingwood's fraction of his uh, deal so if it's Port Adelaide or Sydney they'll be taking on a bit less coin but um, that certainly could mean that they give up a lot less to, to bring him over um, so you know, what do we look at? Port don't enter the draft until pick 37 which makes it probably a, a bit tough You maybe you can look at a future second round or do you they send over a, another future first round which you know obviously they don't have their first this year and try and get a bit more back uh along with Brody granny so that the trade offer there is going to be quite interesting just mm-hmm. to see um what port Adelaide can give up do they get involved in the shane mcadam trade that you know but with adelaide and then um with grundy that would see you know melbourne get mcadam grundy goes to port and then there's a deal somewhere in there that sees uh, the Crows mixed in with the power, um, helping each other out, which would be quite interesting. And then, yeah, if Sydney get involved, they have picked 22, um, which probably is right in the, the sweet spot. But if he's not keen to go to Sydney, then that makes it a bit more difficult. And pick 31 is the other one the Swans have. So they've probably got the better picks and the better hand. But like I said, you can throw future selections in there, and, and um, but it makes it hard when Port don't have a fut- uh, first round pick this year. And if they want to be getting rid of their future pick for next year, um, certainly adds a spanner in the works. So... Uh, you'd say Sydney have the better picks, but uh, it sounds like Port Adelaide are more likely to, to swoop on him. Yep. And next one on the list, so Asava Radigalia. Um, he's been, his name's been thrown around everywhere this year, I feel, but a link to Port, I believe. Yeah, well, there's yeah, a few reports suggested that trade request has it's been lodged in, in a way, or at least Geelong have been informed that he wants to go to Alberton as well. So on top of the Brody Grundy situation, how do they fit two of these guys in, plus maybe more interest in Brandon Zirk Thatcher? So... Um, hard to see them getting through um, to the draft with picks 37 and maybe 43 at their disposal. Um, you know, later se- selections, you know, they can use on the draft when needed. But um, those two selections, maybe even they're splitting a future first for picks that will, you know, garner um, some decent selections for to, to use on both Grundy and Radigalea. Now, I think Geelong are going to make a pretty hard stance. I think they turned down pick 31 from Port Adelaide last year. 
Um, I want to argue that they have a similar amount of leverage, but he was contracted last year, not contracted this year. So they could lose him for nothing. Very uh, unlikely he walks to the preseason draft though. So yeah, same as before, picks 37 and 43, maybe a player involved. Um, who that is though is, is really hard to, to you know, really note on who Port Adelaide would be open to getting rid of. There are obviously a heap of the names mentioned last year when Jason Norton Francis wanted to go home and um, Port Adelaide did well just to only move picks on, but could be a different case this year if, if um, Geelong are after a, a player and Port Adelaide don't have the picks to, to kind of satisfy a deal there. Yep. And, and Liam Henry has officially requested a trade as well. So what's his value there? Well, yeah, there's a couple of things. Obviously, they it was a next generation academy graduate for them, a top 10 pick, probably hasn't played to the level of top 10 pick, but what he's shown this year is certainly um, plenty of upside and what he can offer. And the interest could certainly lead to a bidding war that, that you know, maybe a, a late first round pick for him, given it was a top 10 pick and Fremantle um, really wanted to keep him. So you look at a club like Hawthorne, St Kilda, Collingwood, um, if he's keen on going to Victoria, which it sounds like Richmond's another one. So Saints probably best suited. I don't know if they give up pick 13 for him. They really want to hold on to their early selection or if they you know, try and advance their way up the draft order. Um, maybe you know, if they can look to split that second selection if they manage to keep that in any trade negotiation that gets them higher up in the queue and then pick 32 is their next selection. Mm-hmm. So like I said, pick 13, good value. And that's going to push back to you know, potentially pick you know, 18 uh, on draft night. So you have to kind of think about that value. Does that work for Freo? But I, I don't know if St Kilda are all that open to that. Collingwood at pick 18, um, whether they, they need Liam Henry is, is another matter. Um, what they've got out of the guys, out of guys like Bobby Hill, Jack Inovan, uh, Bo McCreary kind of has that role sewn up. But if they want maybe more wing options, um, you know, still Cybon coming near the end of his career and um, a bit more selection pressure as on those outside midfield options, that, that might be helpful for them. So pick 18 and 33, probably some of the, a better hand. Richmond 25 and 44, is 25 enough? Uh, I think Freo would like to see a bit more given that, yeah, these picks in the first, you know, 20 to 30 selections are going to be falling back a few spots. Um, and then Hawks pick 29 and 48, assuming they're not giving up you know, pick three yeah. to, to get in Liam Henry. So like I said, there's obviously going to be a lot of future selections that can be put on the trade table, but from a, a 2023 selection standpoint, they're the kind of picks for those four clubs. And yeah, the, it's going to be really interesting to see how he's valued uh, by Freeman on how he's valued by the Victorian clubs that are interested. Yep, awesome. All right, so staying on the uh, trade market, so we're going to take a look at some trade targets for the West Coast Eagles. Yeah, a couple of just more obvious ones, I think, um, given that the Eagles are really trying to build out their list and there's been a few players that they're they're in line for trying to get through the door once Tyler Brockman, who is said to have also been one that's requested a trade home, um, whether that's Fremantle or West Coast, it sounds like the latter is the more likely. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's one that we've listed. Devin Robinson's another one, WA boy, um, that is still off contract. Um, sounds like you know, more likely to stay at Brisbane maybe, but uh, West Coast certainly trying to pull in some of these younger guys more lo- and local talent that um, can help with their li- list rebuild. And a couple other guys, um, another WA native is Bryn Teekle. So the Ruckman at Port Adelaide can play forward, has also been trialled as a defender this year. So that kind of versatility and untapped potential might be what is so attractive um, from for West Coast for looking at a player like him who is off contract. You know, if Brody Grundy's a target for Port Adelaide and he's coming through the door and what opportunities that leaves for someone like a Tickle, um, kind of raises a few questions. So um, certainly one that they could target there. And then Flynn Perez was just another one. If they want some halfback run, on some dash um, and just a, a young player that's looking for more opportunity. So a young kangaroo who is another one who's unsigned for, for next year. So that's a few targets for West Coast. Yep. And we'll also take a look at some trade targets for the Western Bulldogs. Yeah, so just to round out our series, uh, a few for the dogs. One we actually mentioned before that I didn't have in that trade pieces um, part was, was Liam Henry for the dogs. You know, do they look for someone that can offer some outside run, that can also go forward and kind of make that pairing with Cody Waitman? Um, yeah, I think he would be one that would be a good suitor for um, for the dogs uh, if you know if they want to get interested in that market. Hunter Clark and Caleb Marshbank, a couple of these just cheaper guys who can play defensive roles, add to their their depth options, and maybe allow guys like Bailey Dale and uh, Ed Richards and Caleb Daniel to play further up the field if that's what Luke Beveridge is after. Um, for a couple of free agents as well, so James Jordan, uh, cheap midfield option, can play inside, can play out. 
um, that might just help fine tune uh, their midfield a little bit more and just add, you know, a bit more depth to what is a star studded group, but something that um, they just want to still build and roll on uh, when they look for the future. And the other one's Tom Duday. Now, would, would they be one that looks at him? It's not going to cost them anything other than just salary cap space. Um, an interceptor can, you know, play on those more medium sized forwards, but uh, small and tall if he wants to. Um, and, you know, the dog's back line's always been a bit of a weakness for them over the last few years. Um, so, yeah, he's probably a, more of a, a left field one, but certainly gettable. He's from Victoria, hasn't had all that much interest um, from Victorian clubs, it sounds like. So, yeah, maybe Tom Dude to the dogs might be, might be one that works both ways for all parties involved. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, that wraps it up for today's episode of Zero Hanger TV. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, Felix. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're going to have a lot of content over the final series and obviously the um, upcoming trade period and draft period. So um, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, you can catch all the latest AFL news at zerohanger.com.